effective ERP steering committee is one of the most important things that you can do well for your digital transformation. It's one of the things that will set the tone for your project and ultimately ensure success. But what exactly is an effective executive steering committee and what is it we can do to establish expectations with our steering committee? I'm going to talk about that here in today's video. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients through their digital transformations. And over the years, we've worked with a number of different project teams and steering committees. Uh, some were more effective than others. Some were extremely effective. Some were extremely ineffective. And there's been a lot of experiences in between. But I was recently working with a client in the Middle East and really experienced a, a good case study of what an effective steering committee can and should look like. And I'm going to talk today about what some of those best practices are that we've seen in this case study, as well as other effective executive steering committees that we've worked with. So before we jump into what exactly makes an effective steering committee, it's important to talk about what exactly is the steering committee and what do we expect that role to play throughout a transformation. And as I mentioned in the intro, an effective steering committee is extremely important to be successful in these types of projects. In fact, a lot of times when we see failures or struggling implementations, we can trace back a lot of the problems back to the fact that we didn't have an effective steering committee, we didn't have executive sponsorship and that sort of thing. So to understand what a steering committee does, let's talk about a few things in terms of what we've seen uh, the role typically play in those types of projects. First of all, the steering committee is responsible for setting the tone and the overall direction for the project. So defining the vision, the goals and objectives of the project, and really defining how this project will enable a broader set of strategies and objectives. And typically it's only the steering committee that can decide that. The executives that are overseeing the project, that have a vested interest in seeing this project succeed, are ultimately the ones that need to decide what is it that we can do to help this project better support our bigger picture goals and objectives. And then the second thing a steering committee does is they are typically responsible for high level strategic decision making. So anything related to the overall implementation timeframe, the implementation budget, uh, big business process changes, or organizational changes that might result from the project, you should have a steering committee that can make decisions around approving or not those types of projects. So either they're gonna approve those decisions or they're gonna provide alternatives or make the decisions that make the most sense for the organization. And once we get the alignment on those decisions at the top, at the executive steering committee level, those decisions and those parameters that are set at the top should trickle down to other parts of the organization. And then finally, anytime there's changes along the way during an implementation, whether it's a potential increase to budget or scope, or even some organizations, if there's a request for customization or sort of a major change to the software the way it's being implemented or anything to do with risk management and risk mitigation those are the types of things that the steering committee should be involved with throughout the project so typically it's a lot more hands-on involvement than a lot of executives expect it to be so that's a bit about what a steering committee does now let's talk about what makes an effective executive steering committee so one of the first things that we noticed about this client in particular that I mentioned that we recently visited, as well as other steering committees that have been extremely effective, is just an overall sense of alignment. They have a clear vision of what it is they want out of their organization. They understand the vision of the company. They understand the company's secret sauce. They understand the strengths and weaknesses, what they're doing well, what they could do better. And ultimately, they understand how a digital transformation could potentially increase their odds for success and enable them to achieve their strategy and vision. Now, a lot of times we're working with organizations that have a vision that, that points to uh, certain goals and objectives, but when it comes to making decisions for this digital transformation itself, oftentimes those decisions are in conflict or they don't align with one another. So for example, one of the things that we often find is that companies want to, for example, they want to go through a big quantum leap type of transformation one that's gonna enable overall business model changes and big improvements to their, their operating model. But when it comes time to manage the overall transformation, the digital transformation, they make decisions around budget and resources as though they want to compress time frame, they want to limit resources, they wanna spend a, a small amount of money as possible on the implementation. 
And those two things right there are in conflict. And so that's the type of thing we need from our steering committee is a certain amount of, amount of alignment, both as a team and understanding what our general direction and vision is as an organization, but also as it relates to how we expect the digital transformation to look, how decisions will be made, and ultimately how we're going to define success for that transformation. So the second thing that's very important to see in an effective steering committee is clarity of vision and expectations. And this really builds on the first point around alignment. But when we're talking about clarity of vision and expectations, it's not just having alignment on what the vision is for the project, but also being able to define it in a way that's clear to the rest of the organization. And in particular, the transformation project team. So if you've got a, a project manager and you have a core team and subject matter experts supporting that project, you want all those people to be aligned with that vision for where the organization is headed. So it's not just a matter of the executives getting in a room and deciding what they want this project to be and then giving the marching orders to accomplish X, Y, and Z as part of this transformation. It's a matter of articulating and explaining what that vision is and how this transformation is best going to support that overall vision. And I recently posted another video, which I've included a link to below, that talks about executive alignment and how to get executive alignment. One of the things we talk about in that video, which you can click below, is not only how to get aligned as an organization or as an executive team, but how to articulate that vision in a way that translates into specific parameters for your transformation project. Another component of an effective ERP steering committee is recognition that this project is going to be a true business transformation, or at least it should be. This is not a simple IT upgrade. This isn't like upgrading your Windows operating system or rolling out a bunch of new laptops to uh, employees throughout the organization. This is much more transformative and has a bigger material impact on the way your business operates, how the business processes will function, uh, how organization designs and roles and responsibilities will be defined and ultimately the culture of the organization as well. So we wanna make sure we have a, a understanding that this is a business project, it's not just an IT upgrade, it's not just a software implementation, and we need to make decisions accordingly. We need to have expectations accordingly as it relates to this. So getting back to the case study I mentioned before about our client in the Middle East, that particular executive team was particularly impressive because they had full understanding without us having to educate them that this is a business transformation. In fact, they want and expect this to be a business transformation, not an IT upgrade. And we as consultants at third stage oftentimes spend a lot of our time explaining and educating to executives and others within the organization that this is, this is not an IT upgrade. This is a business transformation. So it's refreshing to see that sort of mindset straight out of the gate. And it's okay if you don't have that mindset now, but the key is to recognize and fully understand what it means and what the differences are between business transformation and true digital transformation versus more of an IT upgrade. I've also included a video below that covers that exact topic in more detail as a way to dissect and understand the comparison between true business transformation and more traditional IT implementation. Another characteristic of effective steering committees that we've worked with has been the ability to make quick decisions not rushed decisions, not premature decisions, but quick decisions. Too often executives get caught up in internal politics and indecisiveness and they can't make a decision around what it is they wanna be when they grow up or whether or not they wanna improve this operating model that's gonna create potentially some short-term disruption and organizational changes. And what ends up happening is that slow decision-making is what ultimately ends up either slowing down the project or perhaps even worse, it doesn't slow down the project and the system integrators decide for you or for the executives what it is the project is going to be and how those processes and the roles and responsibilities are gonna look in the future. So neither option is good. The best option you can really hope for is to make decisions quickly, to own those decisions. And in the absence of fast decision-making and smart decision-making, others are gonna be making that decision for you and that's where typically we see projects get misaligned and get sideways because they're, they're not aligned with the overall direction of the organization. So going back to the case study of the client in the Middle East, I was just there a couple weeks ago with our team, meeting with their executive team and what was really interesting is we were running into a few different, pretty big decisions that had to be made 
during that meeting. For example, we hadn't yet identified who the project manager was for the overall project team, the core project team. So our plan was, like most organizations, we assumed that this would take some time for them to have internal discussions, to run things by other stakeholders within the company. And so we were prepared to keep a running list of decisions that were, we needed to follow up on. And as we were doing this, the client actually stopped us and said, no, no, let's not table that. Let's fix it right now or let's address it right now. And they asked us to stop the meeting for two to three minutes. And they had two to three minutes of discussion amongst themselves. I think there were five or six of them. And they decided right on the spot who the project manager was going to be. And we took that as a decision and we moved on. And since then, they haven't looked back and there hasn't been any uh, resistance to that sort of decision making. And that particular decision was well received within the organization. And we were able to clearly communicate that quickly to the rest of the organization. So that's just one example of the type of decision making and decisiveness that you would want to see in general with an effective steering committee. And throughout an implementation, there are going to be dozens, if not hundreds of decisions that need to be made at a business level not about the technology, but about how we're going to run the business, how our organization is going to look in the future. So we need that steering committee to provide that direction and that quick, focused decision making. Similar to quick decision making, we also need executive teams to be able to mobilize quickly. It's a little bit different here, though. Instead of just making a decision quickly, we also need the execution. We need people to mobilize. We need to ramp up resources where we need them. We need to roll out decisions and changes that we're deciding on. We need to move forward and execute. So we're not just talking about it in a boardroom behind closed doors. In our project team meetings, we're actually rolling out those changes. Getting back to the case study throughout this video, a client we visited a couple weeks ago had a few situations where we made decisions quickly, as I mentioned before, and within 24 hours, we were mobilizing on those decisions. So we had the new project team lead that we had just identified in the previous meeting the day before. The next day, that person was on the ground, on the project team, uh, had the marching orders to, to focus on the project team. And this ability to mobilize is particularly important as it relates to resources, because we're going to need a lot of internal resources. You don't have to worry about your consultants, typically. Typically, they have resources they can provide you, and you're going to pay for them. But what's the bigger risk or the biggest challenge for most organizations are the internal resources and how do we make sure we mobilize and get the right people away from their day-to-day -day jobs and focused on this project. It's a lot easier said than done, but the better we can do that, the more effective we're going to be throughout the overall transformation. So this is just one case study or one example that I've shared here today. but. This one example touches on the common patterns we've seen with the more effective and successful steering committees and overall transformations that we've been involved with. So I encourage you to think about what is it we can do with our steering committee to make them more effective, uh, to help educate them on what they need to do to be more effective, and to ultimately make the project successful. Now, if you are interested in learning more, I've included some links below about digital transformation best practices I also encourage you to reach out to me if you'd like to brainstorm ideas on how it is you might educate or work with your steering committee to help them understand their roles and expectations. Or if you are on an executive steering committee, I'd be happy to talk to you as well. So I've included my contact information below as well as some links. I also encourage you to please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and provide any comments you have, any feedback you've seen with steering committees that have worked particularly well or just your experiences with working with your steering committee. Thanks very much for your time and have a great day.